Hey friends, today we're gonna take a really boring beat that sounds like this and use what in my opinion is one of the most underrated devices, Envelope Follower, to make the beat sound like this. So I'm gonna provide today's video as an Ableton Live set that you can download for free. So anything that I go over in here, you can kind of pick apart yourself if you'd like. That's gonna be down in the description or comments. But anyway, let's go ahead and we're gonna delete this entire effect chain and build it up from scratch, because why not? All right, so <laughs> this is the beat by itself. Oh, so boring. So here's what we're gonna do. One of the really fun things to do with an envelope follower is to kind of mess with the reverb. So let's start with the reverb. I'm just gonna grab an Ableton reverb here and I don't know, make some modest settings. Pre-delay can actually be a fun thing to do here, but let's start with low density and I'll turn the dry wet all the way down. Next thing I'll do is I'll grab an envelope follower. So if you don't know where it is, you could also just go to your modulators. It lives in your modulators. So envelope follower, right? Now, the envelope follower, depending upon where it lives in your signal chain is what it's gonna be listening to. So right now, if I put it right after the drums, it's gonna be listening to the dry drums. If I put it after the reverb, it's gonna be listening to the drums plus the reverb. So for example, we can now see this graphical representation of the signal coming into the envelope follower. But if I turn the dry wet all the way up, watch this. But if I leave the dry wet of the reverb all the way up and drag the envelope follower prior to the reverb, watch this. So in that, it's really important where you put the envelope follower. And for this example, we should probably leave the envelope follower pretty close to the beginning, although it's kind of fun to move it around later. But let's go ahead and now we're gonna do something really interesting with the envelope follower. We're actually gonna turn the reverb up whenever the drums are not present. So let's go ahead and click map here. And this is how you tell the envelope follower what to do. I'm gonna click on dry wet. So now we can see it says mod, right? And then we have a plus and minus little guy here. Check out what happens now, just, just by default. We can see that the dry wet is going up every time there's a drum hit. That's not what we want. We want it to be the opposite. We want it to go up every time the drums are not present. So what we can do is we can turn this into reverse mode, right? So now it will be fully wet unless the drums are there. So right now we're getting the drums to come through and then the reverb to come right back. That's not necessarily what we want either. The cool thing about an envelope follower is yes, it follows the envelope of the signal going into it, but what's also cool about it is that you can mess around with the actual outputted envelope. So right now I could make the fall a lot faster. Check this out. Now we can see that we've got a little bit more drums coming before the reverb comes back in. But right now this reverb is super wet, so we're gonna turn the dry wet all the way down to maybe like 20%. Now take a listen. Now we can clearly hear that we have dry drums and then the reverb comes in over time, right? But let's hyper exaggerate this. I think that'd be really fun. Let's go ahead and grab a overdrive. And with overdrive, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a similar thing, but this time we're gonna take the drive control itself and drive it up whenever there is not drums present. And so in order to do that, we actually need to open up this menu right here. And what this will do is it will show you up to eight different places that you can map an envelope follower. So I'll click on map here and then I'll click on the drive. Now, you don't have to always use the plus minus setting. You can actually click on this and it'll just turn to plus. So, so what does that mean? What this essentially switches is between bipolar and unipolar modulation. In other words, it'll add 50% to the control. If I have it in plus minus mode, it'll add and subtract negative 49% in this example. So for right now, let's say I want it to subtract, yeah, like 40%. Let's see what happens when we do that. Now we've over-exaggerated that reverb coming in. Isn't that fun? Now, if I were to have this on just plus minus mode, you'll see that it will be above, right, and below. <laughs> Pretty fun, right? Okay, 
that's probably over the top. So we're just gonna leave this at negative 40. All right, so let's keep going. The next thing we're gonna do is use a multiband compressor. I'll slap that on here. And in this example, we could use this as like a dynamic EQ. So something we could do here is do some positive modulation to the bright top end of the drums. Let's go ahead and click map here on this uh, third mapping. And we're gonna choose to increase the output, okay, of the high frequencies. So this time, let's just do plus. And let's be careful here. We probably don't need that much. We'll start with zero and let's start to add it. I'll go ahead and collapse the reverb down so we can see. That's kind of pleasing. So we could turn the output down to compensate and now we'll have somewhat of like a spitty bright end happening. And maybe we want to tune this a bit. The crossover right now is kind of low into the mid-range. Maybe we want to just boost the brilliance. So we'll go up to 6K. All right, maybe we'll do the same thing with the lows. Let's maybe go up to like, yeah, like 150 or something to get some punch. And we'll do the same thing. I will map this filter to this output. And we'll make it just a positive modulation. And let's see what happens. And you can see we're starting to clip, so maybe what I'll do is I'll <clears throat> grab a glue compressor real quick, and we're going to slap this on the output, and we're just going to turn soft clipping on for now. Because what this will do is this will essentially clip the signal that goes above zero. Cool. Okay. So without the multiband dynamics, with it. Nice, and so we could tune this if we want. Right now I've got a lot of punch happening because I'm I'm up into the kind of punch chest hit range, but I could bring this down if I just want to add some sub. Hey, a quick message from our video sponsor, me. If you're enjoying this video and you're serious about your music, I'm presently running a sale on my Ableton online courses. These courses cover the main four directions you could go with Ableton. Songwriting, mixing and mastering, sound design, and live performance and live looping. Between all four of these courses, there are over 100 hours of organized video lessons just like this, designed to raise your skills and knowledge quickly and efficiently. This is not some grifty subscription service. When you enroll in Seed to Stage, you get lifetime access to the course content. You also get lifetime access to the always awesome Seed to Stage private Discord, where you can get near real-time Ableton help and mentorship from me and the other members of the community. Finally, thanks to Ableton, all of my students get 30% off Ableton software and upgrades. To my knowledge, these are the most thorough courses on Ableton Live in existence, and I stand by the quality and effectiveness of these courses to the degree that if you're not satisfied, you can get your money back within 30 days. And finally, these courses are constantly being updated as Ableton rolls out new features. We welcome all genres and all walks of life. I hope to see you in the course community. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Okay, so maybe the next thing we'll do is let's add a spectral something. Spectral resonator, haha. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> this thing's fun, right? You can actually choose which note you want. So in this case, I'll use an A. Let's go down an octave. Maybe a couple octaves. Let's go down to... Eh, that might be too much. So something I've noticed is that if I turn decay up every time there's a kick drum, it kind of sounds cool, right? Let's do that. So we're going to use our envelope follower and map that to the decay. So now it's going to go up every time there's a kick drum. Now it's doing positive negative. We could probably just make it a uh, default to just positive. And let's put this before the compressor. And maybe we'll turn the decay up a bit. Cool. All right, so let's maybe mess around with the shift and the stretch to make it sound cool. And a little bit more.
more damping here. And then of course, I don't need all that. That's like, that's, that's really wet. So we could just add this as an effect by turning the dry wet down. Cool, I like it. Maybe a little bit more decay. So thus far, this has been pretty tame and I kind of want to have some fun with this. So another thing we could do is we could grab an amp and this is where we can really make this go over the top. So now I have an amp here. And first of all, this is probably gonna get really ratchet. So I'm gonna turn my treble and my presence all the way down because this will be probably pretty pretty wild. When you're using a distortion like amp, you're gonna be adding a lot of bright saturated top end just by virtue of using a distortion. So that's why I turn those down. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch on dual mode. Uh, when you're doing this kind of processing with amp, likely your signal has some stereo elements to it. If you don't turn it on dual mode, you'll just have a mono signal. Right, that's not fun. Put it on dual. And at least for now, we can hear that nice wide stereo uh, reverb in there. Maybe let's add some stereo with spectral resonator by turning it on chorus or wander mode. Let's see what this does. Okay, so thus far, pretty distorted and kind of sounds like crap. Let's mess around with it though. I don't think this is kind of the algorithm that I want to use. I kind of want to use this rock algorithm because it always makes such really fun ratchety sounds. Take a listen to this. Oh, I love it. All right, <laughs> we're gonna filter that in just a minute. But first of all, we need to add the envelope follower to it. So I kind of like what happens when I mess with the gain here. We'll set the dry wet around halfway and let's go ahead and go over here and map the envelope follower to, of course, the gain. So what I'd like to do is make it so that the gain gets reduced whenever there's drums. So what that means is that I need to put this on plus mode but make negative modulation percentage. So now let's see what happens now. Okay, so for now, maybe let's do a little bit of filtering. I'm going to grab an EQ8 and drag it after this. And what I'd like to do is just kind of roll off some of the top end. So. Nice. Now you can hear it's a little bit more pleasing. But the downbeats, the, the clicks of my kick drums aren't exactly doing what I want, right? I kind of want them to be bright. So yet again, what we can do is we can now use the envelope follower to map to the filter frequency. And so it'll kind of go up every time there is a drum hit, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'll click on map right here, go to my filter frequency. And now let's make it just positive. All right. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know, 34%. So in this regard, we need to kind of choose where is our resting point? Where is the EQ going to just remain? Maybe something like this. And while you can't see this kind of going up and down, that'd be pleasing. I wish it did that. You can, all, you can actually see it right here. So without it, ugh, with it. Okay, so now I've done a lot here and I think this is where an envelope follower is really fun to mess with. And that's when you take the envelope follower and then you start to mess with its own controls because there are so many different things that are affected by the envelope follower that just changing its controls can have some really drastic effects. <clears throat> so first of all, if we turn, let's go ahead and listen to what happens when we turn the fall up. That's pretty cool. And so we can dynamically kind of mess with this. We could turn the fall down and uh, what the effect of doing this in this specific case is, is that it's going to increase kind of the gain of the distortions.
I don't know if you noticed, but I turned the gain up a little bit to try to get the full range. Turning the gain up is not gonna necessarily turn your signal up, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn up the amount of modulation that the envelope follower can output because you're kind of giving it the full range. I think it's a good idea to try to get the envelope follower to see a full range of something from the very top to the very bottom. But while we're here, we might as well kind of experience what happens when I turn the gain down. That's kind of fun too, right? I think a more dynamic control would be messing with fall. Let's turn the fall back a little bit and let's uh, mess around with rise. What this will mean is that the, the envelope follower will now have an attack stage to it and it will rise up slowly, uh, thus making distortion on those drum hits. Pretty cool. Another thing you can do is you can delay this by a millisecond amount. So maybe you want to get a very specific attack. But I think it's really cool to actually sync this to the clock. So check this out. Now that we're synced to the clock, I can delay this by a clock division and get some rhythmic results. <laughs> Super fun. All right, so something else we should probably do. There's a lot of really annoying like mid-range in the uh, snare hit. So another thing we could do is maybe grab a, another auto filter here. And let's go ahead and put this, um, yeah, near the end. And what we could do is we could turn this on a notch filter mode and kind of notch out some of the things that we don't like. So... That's kind of fun. So let's go ahead and instead of uh, using its LFO, let's go ahead and use the uh, envelope follower. So I'm gonna click on this and use the last uh, guy right here to mess around with its filter frequency. So let's put it here. <laughs> And I don't know if this is useful to anyone, but you know, the more resonance you add to a filter normally, you get more of an effect. With a notch filter, it's inverse. So the higher the resonance, the less effect you get. So you can kind of like make it a little bit tighter and have like a little bit less of an effect over the signal. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these other tracks here. I wanna show you something that's really interesting. So let's listen to this track without the envelope follower. This is just an instance of Mel doing a really basic synth line, sounds like this. Right, kind of boring. Like I showed you in the last example, it's fun to mess with uh, reverbs uh, and use an envelope follower to kind of open and close whether it's there or not. You can do the same thing with delay and you can get some really interesting rhythmic results from it. So take a listen to this. Here's with the envelope follower on and I need to turn the dry wet back down to compensate and this shape control, but take a listen to what happens now. Now I won't bore you and show you all the things that I've mapped to this, but essentially we're just gonna focus on the dry wet of the delay. If I set this at 0% and I have some dry wet, the delay is always on. And maybe that's what you're going for, but in this case, I'd really like to have some fun with this delay by decreasing the dry wet. And now the delay is only there when there isn't any synth line, right? And what's cool about this is you can experiment with different clock divisions and you can get these really interesting rhythms. So at three, we get this.
Now, another use case for the envelope follower that's really interesting is you can use it to control an EQ. In this specific case, the meld track and the drums are kind of competing for low mid space. I really like the low mid of the synth track. But when I have the drums in, you can hear that it's kind of going away, right? So something we could do is use the envelope follower that is living on the meld track to control an EQ in the drum track. So check this out. Let's grab another EQ8, and here's a really interesting workflow you can do for this. Let's just look at the frequency spectrum. So this is where the fundamental is around here, around uh, 200 Hertz, right? Right, so that's where the fundamental is. And then let's let's maybe find like the first uh, order harmonics here. Okay, so I've set three and two, these two filters. These are where those frequencies live, okay? So something I can do, I'm gonna turn off adaptive EQ because who needs that? Maybe I'll turn the Q up to a little bit above one for each one of these. So now if I take both of these filters and I crank them up, we're kind of emphasizing the instrument, right? So now what I can do, now that I've identified those, is I can take this EQ8 and drag it onto the first track. And now check this out. This is where it really gets good. Going to the meld, let's click on map. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click back over to the drums, and I'm gonna click on one of these filters gain. I'll click on this one. And now the gain is gonna get controlled whenever there is signal from the meld instrument, right? So we're gonna essentially be ducking those frequencies out of the drum track. Now let's go back to the meld and make sure we've got it set right. You can see that we've got it set to like negative 50%. Let's put it on, yeah, like negative 50. That might be a lot. Let's do the same thing with the second one and we're gonna map this one. First of all, we're gonna put it on positive mode. We're gonna map this one to the gain of the other filter. So that happens to be number three. Click on gain. So now we can watch it get reduced. So now that we've got this set up, let's go ahead and first start by listening without the EQ8 on. Listen to how much more the meld instrument is now jumped to the foreground. Another thing we can do to make this even more apparent is to simply turn up the modulation. So I'll crank it all the way up so you can really hear this. Without it. With it. So that's going pretty hard. You I probably don't really need that much, but I wanted to make sure you heard it. Let's go maybe to 70. Now, of course, how you set the envelope follower also is really gonna make a big difference. If I want this fall to last longer, it's actually gonna scoop the drums a lot more. So take a listen. Right. Now in this final example, let's take a listen to this. This is just a pad. Right, there's no rhythm to it. You can use envelope followers to make rhythms. Let's go ahead and use a utility. And something I could do is I could simply map the gain to the output of one of these envelope follower filters. Let's go ahead and click on this. Now. Awesome, so right now we're following the same rhythm. I'll turn the gain down a little bit and let's take a listen. That's kind of cool, but maybe what I'll do is I'll go back to meld. I'm gonna turn this on to just positive mode and let's actually remove signal 100% whenever this signal on the meld is actually happening. Now take a listen. Right, pretty sweet, right? Let me go ahead and remove this modulation and let's try something else. You don't have to always use the same envelope follower for everything. Another thing I could do is I could grab a second envelope follower. I'll put that on the meld track. And of course, remember where you put it really matters. So I'm gonna put it right here. And this time I'm gonna delay it. And the reason I don't wanna use the same envelope follower is that I don't wanna delay all the other things that I've done. Let's try to use a uh, quarter note delay. And this time I'll go to my mapping. I'll click on this guy and I'll click on my my gain here. So now I get. Okay. 
As you can see, we're not getting that much signal in the envelope follower, so I need to t turn this up. But before I do that, I should probably turn the gain of the utility down. Now let's try this. Right? Super cool. Let's go ahead and just listen to these two by themselves. Essentially, we're taking the rhythm from this track and applying it to this track. Cool, so if you want this set, if you want to pick it apart and mess around with it, you can download it below this video. You just got to make sure that you have the latest version of Ableton 12. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. See you next time.